being gay and in the army nearly drove me to suicide. Why can't you be the change? The army is definitely not the place to come out as gay. Imagine a question like, do you have to stick tampons up your ass after you've been <laughs> My best friend at the time banging my door and saying, get your stuff, get off the camp, they're coming for you tonight. You need to get out, you need to go now. What was it like growing up at home? I knew I was gay from a very young age. During my teenage years and obviously at school, that's when things were obviously battling the most. My mum then actually found out about an incident that happened with a friend of mine from school and said, it's just a phase and you'll just snap out of it one day. But do not tell your father, do not tell any of your siblings, we'll just forget this ever happened. I struggle with identifying who I was as a person and losing track of myself I then believed in my teenage years that joining the military was the best way to become a man. It makes you a better man, a stronger man. It was quite hard to listen to your story because I had like a similar experience with my family. Like when I came out, it was really horrific. My parents didn't speak to me for like two weeks. Obviously you escaped to the army to get away from somewhere where you just didn't feel like people understood you or would just give you the time of day. Yeah, absolutely. And then when they don't accept you for who you are, you do seek to find that group that will accept you. And I just was adamant that to be the strongest man, I had to be in the army. And not just anything, I had to be a frontline soldier. What was it like joining the army at 16? I was whipped off to um, operational tours in Afghanistan before I knew it. And imagine being in that situation where you're potentially going to lose your life and you actually don't even know who you are as a person. I've now completed my training. I get to obviously my battalions. And I started to get called, you know, little sister and stuff like this. That same old question keeps cropping up, am I gay? You know how blokes can be, like in those environments? Everything becomes quite sexualized, but I'm going to continue to lie about it. And there was a party and uh, a regimented party, by the way. I was asked by a soldier, so, so are you gay? And I'd obviously hit a boiling point and I turned around, yeah, I am. You know, and I was ready to fight everyone. They said, we still, we still know you're a good soldier. We don't mind about your sexuality. I felt very welcomed and I wasn't this loner anymore. I let myself trust in that completely 100%. So you become quite a close-knit family and it is all really tight. And then I started being told to do Q and A's. Go stand up there, you know, do a Q and A. Tell us what it's like to be gay or tell me about diseases, you know. You get your lunch out, it's a banana. Deep throat banana owl. Imagine a question like, do you have to stick tampons up your ass after you've been Did you just not think there was anything wrong with it because you were being given, finally given this sense of family and community that it, they could have pretty much said anything and you've been like, this is fine. I mean, they could literally say anything. And I wasn't this loner anymore. I had this, this big masculine family that all open their arms and let me in. And I answered their questions to the best of my ability. I mean, I threw myself at that. I was like, wow, well, this is lovely. And it, and it really wasn't, it was all fake. So I came back from Afghanistan and um, near the end of that operation, I realized things were really, really wrong. And my mental health was on a steep decline. It, this is years and years and years of just being degraded. I remember saying to my captain at the time, look, I, I um, I can't do this. Like, I, I know there's something wrong. And he went, no, no, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. And I knew I now was suicidal. We got given a map reading task and I walked into the sea with a bag on my back, halfway up. And I said, that's it, I'm, I'm just gonna walk out. I said, I don't wanna live anymore. And I just stopped in my tracks and I thought, I'm not letting this beat me. When I got back to everyone, I, and I just crumbled. I remember dropping to my knees and said, I can't do this. And they were looking at me like I'm an alien. When there's a mental breakdown in any sort of environment like that, you have to be isolated from the unit because it can basically run rife like plague. They took me away and, and they sent me back to the camp. Did they treat mental health as like a sign of weakness? Yeah, absolutely. I was already gay. So if you've got mental health and you're gay, then you, you're just a, a troublesome a troublesome soldier. I was sent to work in the stables with horses. My grandma just died, who I was very close to. I contacted one of the counselors who was military based. And I said, I really need to talk to someone. I need to get this, I need to get this. I need to talk because I'm drinking and I'm feeling suicidal again. And I remember sitting in his office and as I started to explain, look, my grandma's just died. I look up 
and he's unbuttoned his trousers and he's sat on his desk. And I remember looking and I just thought, almost like, what the hell is going on? Like, what is wrong with these people? Hearing you speak about the amount of like, essentially sexual assault and just general abuse that goes, goes on within a supposed family setting. I mean, it's harrowing, like it's not nice. That was the sort of catalyst, I think. That, that was it for me then. That was, I need to report this. I'm reporting not him, but I was reporting the wider issues that I'd gone through and the abuse I'd gone through, specifically within my platoon. So my written report consisted of detrimental facts. I reported it and I remember going to so-called friends and saying, I need you to put in witness statements. Doors were closing left, right and centre. Nobody wanted to know. Their careers were at stake. It led to a point where I rang an individual who had rank, and if he supported me, we would have actually made some headway. And um, he didn't. He went to the person and the people I was reporting and told them what I was doing. My best friend at the time banging my door and saying, get your stuff, get off the camp, they're coming for you tonight. When somebody tells you, especially your best friend, they've got a master key, you need to get out, you need to go now. And I remember calling this family and I said, you need to get me off the camp, like you need to get me out of here. And I remember laying low in our car as we drove out the camp and I was terrified. And then I left and then I, I got, got out, but I was still part of the army. I was technically AWOL for a little portion of time. What would they have done to you if like, because it's this. It sounds so threatening. Like oh no, it is threatening, and it is what you whatever you're thinking. Take it for that. Like it is that you are going to get hurt, and it's going to be violent. I can't say that I'm shocked. My boyfriend is currently serving in the RAF. Yeah. The army disciplinary system to me doesn't exist. They'll cover each other's backs first, and they'll pre-warn, and we'll do what we can to deal with things in house to avoid a bigger backlash. They never talk about like how much mental health issues, like it sounds like it's just ravaging the army. There's no support to allow people to be mentally strong. It's very primal in the environment that I was in and it very much is survival of the fittest. We were all alcoholics, there was substance misuse, there was just violence in every aspect. I then had a civilian solicitor, I was ready to take the army to court. The army, they are just tooth and nail, just categorically saying you have no case. And I think the words were, they had now educated some of their staff and uh, no further action will now be taken. And that was a couple of years of fighting for that case just to be thrown out so easily. You've clearly got a story and you're educating us, so why can't you go into that industry and educate other people? Maybe one day, but at this moment in time, I don't even think I have the strength to, to be able to do that. So, where are you now? How is your mental health basically coming from that environment? When I left the army, I did get a diagnosis of PTSD. I got support and I then had a normal career. And now, yeah, it makes me emotional, but I couldn't be any happier. My fiance is such a solid rock. He's such a powerful, strong man to me. And it's the life I'd always ever wanted. It's kind of nice that like, you went into the army to find your community but instead you've came out of it and found that community and camaraderie with your fiance. That was just very beautiful, it was a very nice ending. Yeah. Anything I could say to anyone now is just be the person you want to be and it doesn't matter what anyone thinks as long as you're happy, you know?